Good morning. Welcome, everyone, to this pre-NGI forum event, which is also an NGI salon, and we are doing this in cooperation with our partners, Elon Tech, Mantalena, Kylie, and um, partners. And we're extremely happy to have this, well, this this kind of uh, this 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 packed hour on self-sovereign identity. And um, uh, as we have so many good speakers, I'm just going to be very very short and just hand over to uh, Loretta Nania, who is the PO of NGI um, Forward and um, SF Labs. And um, she is um, having a kind of a, an overview of the situation in which we are now. So Loretta, please, um, it's all yours. Thank you. The, the, the key phrase is, can you hear me? I hope you can. Uh, I can't see you, but I know you're there. I'm very happy to welcome you to the NGI Forum which uh, the big opening is tomorrow, but this is a specialized event on, uh, on self-sovereign identity and the idea of putting the human back in the digital world. Well, right now, the digital world really lacks the human trust that happens uh, online, I mean, that happens in the real life, where you know who you're talking, you know where the location, uh, you know it's a human, but here it's all a, a machine uh, generated environment or mediated i should say and so i'm very happy to to be able to support my projects so uh, as rob mentioned uh SIV lab and uh, ngi forward uh are, have 10 million euros from our unit to support uh to support you so i'm happy to have so i'm here to support my projects uh, many of you are supported through these NGI projects and we welcome everybody else who is listening because there's many calls open. So if I could have my first slide. Um, yeah, so trusted digital identity needs safeguards. Um, so first of all, but these are not my slides, huh? These um, have been edited. So if I could, let me try my own slides. Share screen. Oh, yes. Share. Oh, yes. Oh, we edited them for, um, um, yes, indeed. Yeah. I told you it's machines uh, taking over. If I could have just my plain, simple text slides. Yes. Manolis, can you put them on? Okay, that's it. So, next yeah. slide, please. I think it's the same. It's going to be the same. Yes. Uh, well, no. okay. These are these are not the ones um, that I'm ready to talk to. Share screen. Yeah. Uh, share. Wait. Loretta, let's yeah. let's we let's uh, let's oh. let's uh, we'll we'll get the right slides up, and let's move to Primavera, and then we we uh, we get the right slides up. And we'll we'll have you talking in about ten minutes after Irene maybe, and then with the right slides. Is that okay? I'm perfect. So sorry about this and uh, Primavera. So um, so we'll, we'll we'll have the slides of Loretta later. But um, maybe uh, would you be sort of having your five minutes or three, four, five minutes on um, where you think that um, what's the most it's most, the most um, pressing things or the most urgent things or the things that you see now in this space of self-sovereign identity. Uh, I think you should unmute. Right. Uh, do I get to share slides or should I just speak to it? Maybe it's easier, I can just speak for a few minutes. Um, okay, so yeah, um, to me like there is this, um, this, this very important question to be uh, to be identified, which is like uh, when we talk about self-sovereign identity, like what are we really talking to? Um, and the thing is, like when we talk about identity, we have this uh, oftentimes uh, association with a particular identifier, and uh, and and most of the time, this identifier is like you know things that are uh, defined or uh, or um, or. In Posed or assigned to us by a particular centralized authority, whether it's uh, 
uh, you know, passport number or social security number and so forth. Um, and when we talk about self-sovereign identity, we're actually talking about like, on the one hand, generating uh, our own identifier, but at the same time, uh, generating our own identifier doesn't mean much because it means that anyone can just generate any identifier that they want. Um, and so there's this, this important distinction to, to be have between identity as defined by identifiers and identity as defined by attributes and uh, a collection of attributes that actually characterize me, right? Um, and so when, when and again, the attributes are also assigned to us by, by top parties because otherwise it would be too easy to claim uh, that I possess specific attributes that are not necessarily uh, mine or true. Uh, and so we, we cannot really escape the fact that uh, those identities and those attributes are assigned to us through those trusted third party, but we can actually manage them, right? And so when we talk about such sovereign identity, uh, the point is not that everything is stemming from us, but it is that we choose, we get to choose who are the parties that we trust uh, to which we want to uh, disclose some of the information and receive a particular credential of attestation from them and also then that we are in control of uh, uh, those credentials and we choose who to disclose them to and and we don't depend on this centralized third party to at any point uh, revocate them or, or, or prevent access to this so um this the, the benefit of this is of course like in terms of uh, um uh, data privacy is like minimization of the number of parties to which we need to disclose the same information. So uh, if I have my own collection of attributes within my self-sovereign identity framework, uh, I can uh, identify myself to multiple operators by showing just the credential that I have already been assigned by one particular trusted uh, third party to which I, I really disclose the information. And as long as the other operators to which I want to identify myself do trust uh, that particular uh, trusted third party, then they don't need to ask again the same information. And so I get to choose uh, to disclose to those actors which I really care about. And, um, and I also can choose which attribute to disclose depending on the need. So I don't need to uh, associate this single identifier. I can just show that th those credentials have been uh, certified. And, um, and then the, the interesting question, I think that's a big challenge uh, when it comes to self-sovereign identity is, of course, uh, this is great whenever all I need to do is I need to prove that I possess particular attributes and, um, and qualities, uh, but it becomes more challenging when it comes to uh, proving the singularity, uh, meaning like when in the context of voting, uh, in the context of, you know, receiving specific uh, financial benefits and so forth, we want to make sure that I cannot multiply my identity. And so even though I can obviously prove because I can go to multiple uh, trusted identity provider and prove that I qualify for those different, uh, those different services, but how do I actually prove that this identity is not associated to the same person as this other identity, which are bought true in the sense that they bought have like they are, no one is claiming false information. But I I need to have a mechanism that shows that this this identity is unique and this identity is unique and they are not both referring to the same individual. And this becomes much more challenging. Um, and so there is like. I think we're losing you. Um, I think we're losing your voice. Is that possible? You muted yourself. Ah, oh, I guess I muted myself. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, just just to 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 close, like the the to me the the, the interesting like the the huge opportunity of uh, self sovereignty is this this possibility of data minimization and selective disclosure, uh, and the challenge is uh, the singularity. How do I ensure that one particular self-sovereign identity uh, is unique to one individual and that the same individual cannot claim to be multiple person by having multiple self-sovereign identities? Thanks. Thank you very much. I mean, this is, this is very clear. So basically, we have this quite recent 
kind of set of tools that are quite technical in a way. And, um, and, and sort of transporting that to real human uses and real ways of, of how humans operate uh, needs governance. It needs a governance systems to sort, to, to sort of streamline and harmonize all these mechanisms that you basically talk about. And I think that's, that's where we are now, sort of building this kind of governance and these consensus mechanisms that, that are, that's really, really, really the key. Um, well, uh, thank you very much for joining us here. I know you have to go to other sessions because you're going, you, you, and also, um, you're, you're sort of, um, also tomorrow, I think we see you at the NGF forum. So um, thank you very much, Primavera, and for, for sort of sketching this scene and sort of sketching out these needs. And, and Daniel, um, sort of from your perspective, uh, that maybe you can quickly sketch your perspective and then, then sort, of, um, uh, sort of have your, 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 your saying on it. Okay, good morning everybody, uh, happy to be here. I'm going to share my perspective from in the side of uh, public services, because public services are also entering this uh, exciting uh, team and exciting venue of uh, digital identities and decentralized uh, identities to be sure. So from in the European South Southern Identity Framework, we are trying to see okay, how can we stimulate that market. If uh, it's okay, uh, Rob, I'm going to share one slide that gives a bit overview, okay, what are we focusing on? And what we are not focusing in, uh, just one slide. Eh? So no presentations. Yeah. No uh, problem. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, I can share my screen. Okay. So I hope you, everybody sees my screen. Um, an overview picture about, okay, everybody knows, so presumably I hope that everybody knows uh, the SSI context where you have issuing parties, verifying parties, of course, the owner fully in control or in, at the heart of the system. Now, what is that government system uh, focusing in is that we uh, see it as in two layers. Huh? We see, of course, the SSI business layer, that's a broader ecosystem. And it's not our focus to build all the necessary components. Eh? For that European project, we see that this is an emerging ecosystem with different players, different market value sectors. So that is outside of our building scope. Eh? What we are uh, trying to do with the European project and the collaboration is to provide certain technical and legal specifications. Eh? You're working in a certain space. Uh, you need to have certain kinds of legal uh, standards and uh, technical standards, so we are providing those things. And what we are actively doing is, of course, how to engage public sector. Yeah? Because public sectors have a lot of uh, personal information that they want to hand over to the user, but you need to be engaged. You need to be willing to interact with those systems, and it's a new paradigm for them. Yeah? So that you have, in a classical example, your diploma, built uh, in university or in, um, in educational um, uh, ministries that they can ha hand it over in that SSI format so it can be used outside the scope. Huh? We are very l looking at uh, co-creating with other projects and other domains to build those SSI business layer. Huh? What we see as our main task is to see, okay, that needs to be built on stable infrastructure and stable aspect. And that's where the European blockchain service infrastructure comes into, where we want to have an infrastructure and core functions that are stable. Yeah? And that is our building scope. So we are a bit at that green layer, what we called is building the underlying uh, aspects. Yeah? So that we have, of course, the public sector. Uh, there will be all the other layers that will focus on the uh, private sector, but this EPSI is, uh, of course, uh, mainly public sector governance uh, driven so that we can enable those kind of things. We want to support other sectors with that, so it's not a closed network that only can be accessed by public sector. It needs to be something that uh, the user can also interact in multiple sectors that he wants. Uh. And of course, with our um, goal, I, with our project, with our program, we also want to inspire the European e-identity program. Yeah? So the thing that I want to bring into this discussion or into this focus is that public sectors and public services are actively looking in Europe at this aspect. They need to see what their place is, but they have, I think, a fundamental place to support at the end that user so that he can interact. Yeah? So we want to hand over the key for public service information, 
but to the user. And then a system that he can really decentralize and trustworthy way uh, interact with that sector. Yeah? So not to have correlation or control in any way, but a tool system that can empower that citizen. And that I think that is the true um, value of that public sector looking at those kind of things. Yeah? I don't know, uh, Rob, if that's clear enough, uh, that gives you an overview of what uh, is our focus. We are now implementing this thing and trying to also follow the different starters, uh, the different starter uh, standards, and also interacting with a lot of uh, market players in this aspect. I think it's a great overview, um, Daniel. And um, uh, and as, as again, as this this hour is basically meant to uh, to to give a lot of information, and, and of course in the chat we can have questions and all. But all of the all of these things are ongoing, and we have discussions in many places. So also this afternoon from. At two to three, we have this kind of discussion where everyone in the chat is invited, and so we can we can have more interaction. But uh, I think this is a this is a great overview, and it shows us um, <coughs> where, from a public perspective, now uh, that sort of this agency uh, agency lies, and and this is where that where all these tensions are now colliding. So you also spoke about all these components, and so the next speaker. Uh, after which we'll have Loretta because the slides are ready, sort of. But af after the next speaker, sort of, Irene. So Irene um, Hernandez from Gatica, she's building one of these components, one of these very, very necessary components of this ecosystem that uh, that's been sketched. And so maybe Irene, if you would like to take the stage. Hello, thank you, thank you, Rob, and and welcome everyone here um, in this uh, talk. My name is Irene, uh, and I'm the CEO at Gataka, an MIT-born cybersecurity company that uh, builds SSI technology. For a quick reference, Gataka is a full-stack production-ready solution compatible with any blockchain network. Um, we've won several grants, including two from NGI. We're domain experts helping the European Commission define the European SSI framework as if Daniel was talking about. We're deploying the SSI and academic diploma use case uh, with the Spanish government as part of the early adopters program. And we're working on a few pilots with government institutions and university consortia. Now, I'm assuming that the audience has some kind of knowledge of SSI. However, I'd argue that few of you actually saw it live. So I'm going to spend one minute to make this concept a little bit more tangible. And then I'll talk about one very special project to us uh, we're leading as part of the NGI SEF lab project. Um, so what you're seeing on my search screen is an excerpt of the video we showed last week to the member states in FC for the quarterly meeting. In the video, a student logs into her private student portal by simply scanning a QR code with her ID wallet. Because she had previously given consent to access her wallet data, she can log in instantly. Now, you can also see how easy it is for this student to download a new credential into her wallet by simply scanning a QR code and authenticate it with other credentials already stored in her wallet. The credential is automatically stored in her wallet uh, where she can view in its content and issuer details. Finally, you can also see how this student can apply in a matter of seconds to a master by filling a lengthy form in really just one click and controlling at any time what information has she provided consent to share. You may think, okay, but this is functional, right? What, is, what else is uh, here to do? And a lot, really. For us, the key challenge uh, today of SSI is interoperability. What you've seen works great because we're using our full technology stack, our Garaka wallet, Garaka certified to issue the diploma, and Garaka Connect to authenticate the student and her application. But what if uh, a user, this student in this case, wants to use a different wallet? Can't she? Should she use three different wallets depending on what technology provider her university, her bank, and her government decide to use? That really doesn't make any sense. And that is precisely the problem we're working on as part of the SAP Lab um, project. As different technology providers build SSI solutions, it becomes critical to ensure interoperability between these solutions. Our Verifier Universal Interface, or WE for short, is an interoperability initiative that aims to define standard interfaces between wallet and verifier components. The WE working group has already eight actively engaged organizations tasked 
with the final definition of three different standard APIs that you can see here on the screen and the execution of real interrupt tests by the end of the year. The group aims at reusing as much of existing standardization efforts um, available as possible, filling the gaps, of course, and bridging perspectives from DIV, W3 Consortium, ABSI, and ARIES. In summary, we're on a mission to build a better, more secure internet, and we believe in SSI as a linchpin for privacy preserving digital transformation initiatives. And our responsibility right now is to build interoperability at global scale. So if anyone in the audience is interested in joining this mission, please reach out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Irene. This is, um, again, I think uh, the way that you're approaching this and building your own solutions and also making sure that I mean, as the as the sea is so big here, because we're talking about a whole new ontology and a whole new space, uh, is this, it, it makes no sense to sort of closing down solutions and having all of this sort of the, the pie is bigger for everyone if everyone if everything is working together. And I think this is also something that you've been um, seeing and pushing and pu putting a lot of time and effort in as well, because it's not easy to start to, to build these kinds of groups. So it's absolutely. Fantastic that you're doing this. So, uh, Loretta, um, if you're ready, we we are we, we have your slides. Could you put the second one up, please? Yes, Manolis, can you put up the slides of Loretta, please? Uh, I next think, one. I think these are the old slides. Doesn't matter. Next one. These no, are the old no, not these are not the right slides. So <laughs> the ones um, I sent yesterday. It's, it's the old slides. Oh. So yeah. So look, I'm uh, going to try. If the it's buttons okay. work. We, we, Manolo, just a second. Share PDF. You. No. Well, Manolis, I, I just send you the, the right slides. We tested twice before the yes. meeting and it worked, right? I sent you the right slides at 11.10. So here they are. Let me see if I can manage. Can you see them? Yes, we got them. OK, fine. Here yes. we are. So Fantastic. trusted digital identity needs safeguards. According to the treaty, uh, their rights to privacy, dignity, and security, and they're assigned to the person. So I have many EU regulatory success stories, uh, you know, making the on life, online choices more transparent. Um, the GDPR, uh, which took a long time, the EIDAS, and all of these should be policies that entitle us. And I'm very happy to have heard uh, uh, Daniel saying no correlation and no undue control without my knowledge. And, and also the difficulty of having to control everything yourself, which I prompt, you know, you noticed it myself here, not being able to control my slides, they've changed in the overnight. Now the Lisbon Declaration is going to be signed on the 1st of June, and it's called Digital Democracy with a Purpose. And it's human-centered, which is also an NGI prerogative. So I started by saying we need the human element back in, because in human, uh, to human, we have, mechanisms for trust, uh, which we don't have on the online world. So, um, you know, we are now seeing movements from uh, centralized to decentralized, federated, self-sovereign, and the next generation internet is about idealistic people, such as uh, somebody I heard last week from, uh, who talks about Kleros port, which is a proof of humanity for the internet as a whole based on blockchain, ethernet. And I was very happy because he mentioned universal basic income, which is one of the ways that many governments and some of my projects have had to overcome digital exclusion and disenfranchisement. Now, why are these actions uh, timely? Because uh, in, as you know, at least four or five member states um, have chosen SSI. Uh, they're not only the member states, but all of us have to do a twin transition. And uh, thanks to the Horizon 2020 and the re resilience and recovery, we now have the scale and scope 
for serious investment strategies that I think were left uh, behind for a long time, uh, not just in infrastructure, also in the internet. Our open calls talk about the open internet. And what is that? That is access that is non-discriminate, non-discriminatory access. So my right to meaningful consent, to opt out, to spy me not, my personal data minimization, no unbounded extraction, no ad hoc repurposing, right to redress, it goes on, the list goes on. So um, we, the previous speakers and the next will talk about SSI infrastructure and self-governed identities which require quite an effort from the end user and her wallet, as, um, as Irene showed us. And finally, UNICE in diversity needs these common interoperability open standards. Uh, but again, um, if you look at the digital assembly uh, uh, document, which will be signed by everyone, uh, what I mentioned, with a purpose, it's human-centered, and it also says we have to reinforce the democratic values and institutions because, regrettably, digitization also bears the risk of deepening existing inequalities, being misused to undermine the democracy, undermine trust and social cohesion, and infringe on human rights. So that document, uh, the number one digital principle, is all about EID. Uh, and so I think uh, if you have uh, ideas, like all the people who are here and the ones who will be in the afternoon, please go to the ngi.eu uh, website, go under open calls, and uh, ESIF has an open call for the next month, and we will have more uh, uh, soon. So thanks for listening. And I go back to my own face, if I can. Uh, it was, thank you there very we much. Go. So thank you very much, Loretta, and apologies for uh, our missing no slides. I mean, it's it's a but 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 you've I mean you you really um, you really you, you set the scope and and you also um, point again to to the to the NGI uh, possibilities where we have all these calls. So now we we have two more um, uh, two more speakers from the very successful SF Labs project, and first is Kaspar, who I see um, uh, there, Kaspar. Um, Bulos. And um, so, Kaspar, it's, it's all yours for a few minutes. <laughs> it's not so long, but I hope you can manage to, to give sort of give a little bit of a context of what you're doing. Uh, yes. Let me get the screen in order. OK. Um, so my name is Kasper. I'm founder of uh, uh, Gimli, and we uh, focus on self-sovereign identity as a uh, pivotal building block in um, well, the future of internet and the future of our uh, society. Um, uh, we live in a, in a rapidly digitizing world where uh, large parts of our lives and activities and interactions, of course, take place online. Um, of course, this was already so, but COVID has clearly uh, accelerated um, uh, this dramatically with businesses migrating to remote work and uh, friends and families having uh, um, uh, Friday night drinks over Zoom. Uh, at the same time, it seems like not one week goes by without uh, some new major data breach, uh, putting uh, pretty much all of our email addresses, phone numbers and passwords uh, on the streets for everyone to see. Um, so we're being uh, confronted with the fact that a really uh, a secure identity layer has been missing ever since uh, the internet was invented. And um, to make things worse, uh, those digital identity solutions that do exist, they're run by corporations uh, whose most important business model is actually to collect as much personal information as they can about uh, us consumers. Um, but the hoarding of data is not only a concern to consumers. Um, hackers are also increasingly targeting businesses with leaked passwords of their employees. And the total cost of cybercrime is estimated to be $6 trillion in uh, uh, this year. So um, 
the main issue here is really that the system, both for identity and data collection, is 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 is, is centralized or federalized in a way. Um, uh, the user has really uh, no control of their data. They're forced to share the data again and again with every new system or service that they are using. Um, and 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 the huge amount of data that's being collected in these centralized databases uh, makes them a very attractive and appealing target to to hackers. Um, at the same time, these, uh, this data collection and the sensitivity of this data is also uh, uh, leading enterprises uh, and businesses to, to, to make uh, large costs uh, uh, to, to be compliant and uh, to, to secure uh, the protection of this data. Um, so self sovereign identity uh, uh, wants to turn this around. We want to put the uh, data collection back with the owner of that data, um, uh, so the user should control that data. This has uh, obvious uh, benefits in security and privacy. Um, importantly, uh, a user can use its identity in one system and use it in another system uh, while keeping control over that data. Um, let's not go into too much detail about how this architecture works, because of course, uh, many of us here uh, should know that. Uh, I want to Point to some some questions, some 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 uh, uh, issues to think about uh, in in what we are trying to achieve. How can we make sure that the self sovereign identity system uh, works for everyone and not just for some parts of our our society um, and 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 not uh, of others? Um, also, an interesting question is there have been so many. Uh, technological revolutions hailed as the next paradigm shift, uh, democrat democratizing the world. Um, how do we know that uh, the decentralization in general and self-sovereign identity, um, uh, how, how do we make sure that they don't uh, become the next uh, failed promise, um, so to say? Um, I, I think an important part there is the fact that uh, around this identity issue and the data collection issue that I just briefly sketched, uh, the interests of enterprise, uh, business, and uh, uh, consumers uh, uh, are able to align very nicely. Uh, at the same time, uh, there's always the question, is this really going to outweigh the major economic value of this data collection that's now driving so uh, such a big part of the uh, general economy. Um, so those are some things that 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 I and 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 we at Gimli keep in uh, keep in uh, in the backs of our heads, also in our projects. Uh, in SF Lab, uh, we are focusing on using uh, smart cards as a uh, uh, SSI uh, hardware wallet that should allow the use uh, open up use cases where you don't rely on smartphones, such mm -hmm. as use cases where people don't have smartphones or where it's not feasible in a enterprise setting. Um, yeah, some other uh, projects also in OntoChain, I will be talking about that later uh, uh, in uh, tomorrow, actually. Um, yeah, so these are, uh, that's, that's an overview. Um, the Google Maps is failing me here. Uh, there's a picture of Amsterdam supposed no. to be there. Uh, we're situated in Amsterdam. Um, uh, do get in touch if you want to collaborate. For example, in our SF Lab project, we're very much looking for other projects to make sure that our uh, uh, project fits in the SSI solutions. Um, and we're also hiring. So uh, let me know if you uh, are interested to learn more about what we're doing. Thank you, Kaspar. That's great. And it's great to say that you're hiring. So I hope if anyone, everyone's here, so that they can get in touch with you. And uh, also focusing on this, quite, let's say that the non-smartphone aspect, and especially going to cards, was, I think that's extremely important because the, um, if we are talking about real adoption, real people, real uh, a real context, uh, also in 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 a day and age of 21% of all Bitcoin being irretrievable because people have lost their keys. And then, then, then we really, really have to think about um, about the real world implications of of, uh, of SSI. We cannot start offloading more responsibilities on end users than they already have now, because then we create an even worse situation than the situation which basically we are in. So all of these things have to be extremely well thought through, and and so definitely going 
having looking at what what can be done without a smartphone is extremely important so i think this is great work um so thanks a lot um our next speaker is michael michael kubach also in, from the asif lab uh, uh, project so michael great to have you here with us um yes please sort of inform us about what you're doing yeah thanks a lot i'll quickly share my screen thank you uh hello from berlin uh thank you rob um, yeah, we are working also in the NGIL ESIF lab um, in a, a project called Train Trust Management Infrastructure. Um, I am from uh, working at the Fraunhofer Institute. I think I'll just skip the, the introduction, but we are a non-profit research institution working in many uh, research projects on identity management already, and we're focusing on, on this very specific particular problem of trust in digital interactions here so how do we know whether someone or someone is trustworthy and this is not just a person uh, whether the person is, is trustworthy but uh, there's also a huge potential for ssi in uh, in uh, the internet of things and so on so uh, and here we are m focusing even more on the issue of uh, yeah issuers uh, of credentials. How can we establish trust in in them? And for this, we need uh, to uh, be able to automate and to also have a very scalable solution. This is what we what we think. And I mean, a traditional uh, traditional way of a trust infrastructure is of course one that is state run, so uh, that you know already from passports, for example, but of of course, just bringing this like with uh, YIDAS, for example, bringing this to SSI will not so solve all our problems because this is not uh, this is limited to only a certain trust domain. Not in all trust domains we have we will have a uh, state uh, issued. Uh, um, credentials this is not so flexible uh, centralized uh, and only yeah part uh, partially compatible with the ssi vision this is why we uh, envision a more flexible approach and this is what we are working towards in, in sf train so we uh, are extending the sf uh, framework with a trust infrastructure that allows verifiers to um yeah uh assess the trust uh, they have into issuers and then so the verifiers are supported with a verifier component with an api and they can write their own trust policies and, and on the other side we allow any institution or any um, whether it's a governmental actor a private sector or also other actors to publish trust lists uh, establish trust schemes so there is not one single trust scheme not one single trust list but it's facilitating the publish publishing and also the discovery of these trust lists and makes this process uh, trans uh, transparent and for this we are building on already um, established standards and trust anchors so for discovery of trust lists we are building on dns dnssec and for the trust list we are uh, building on a certain uh, etsy standard so that makes it easier for verifiers to find the trust list or determine the, the the trust list they want to use and on the other side we want to facilitate it to publish these trust lists and so this is uh we hope will uh, could be a, a scalable and and also a way to automate this trust uh decisions so what we are doing not is we're not restricting anyone from issuing credentials or uh imposing any trust uh, uh decisions here we're just facilitating them so different participating actors can publish and also retrieve this trust relevant information and can verify them according to the to their self-defined policies they can also integrate for example eidas trust list so we also support this and so we want to make it possible to make really autonomous uh, uh, trust decisions and for this we build on a previous uh, h2020 uh, project and on the existing uh, domain name system and uh, yeah so there was not much time today there will be uh, in about a month another another uh, session an NDI forward saloon on, on, on lightest and on trust infrastructures and decisions. We will also showcase a demo that we developed in uh, in the EPSI-ESIF lab to, to, together with two other partners, uh, Validated ID um, and SIGPA. There are papers on our approach to will be presented on the Open Identity Summit. It's also pretty soon and you can also go for further resources 
to our uh, SF Lab GitLab. So if you're interested, get into contact with me. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Yes, and we're very happy to have you back uh, on uh, June 17 with a very um, dedicated session, a very technical dedicated session where we invite lots of experts, also lots of technical experts in order to, to, to talk about that. And um, just one quick comment on, it's, it's, you, you have a team identity, right, in front of a lab. So it really is clear that a lot of work is coming from Germany at this moment. And there's also lots of, I would say, political sort of things going on around SSI and self-sovereign identity, but also on, on identity. And I mean, it looks like this at this moment, like this very specific German kind of push for these things. Do you feel that? Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are three or four big projects now starting on SSI, all leveraging SSI, plus another project that is also uh, driven directly by, by Angela Merkel, more or less, uh, this approach. And we're also uh, we're also presenting our approach here, this train approach there. Um, so there's a huge push towards SSI in, in Germany going on, on at the moment. Yeah. And and you, you, you I mean, you, you, you say Angela Merkel and you sort of, so, so, I mean, how important do you think it is that you have this type of, um, this type of awareness and agree? We all know that Angela Merkel is an engineer, right? Sort of, this is, um, and this is also what, what gave us Industry 4.0 uh, take it away. But um, how important do you think it is to have this kind of awareness at such a high political level? I mean, I don't think in Holland, for example, we have different discussions. We don't have... I don't see many sort of politicians at that level sort of pushing for this. Do you think, do you have any idea how this is, why this is, or? I think it's super important. Um, well, I, I think one aspect might also be that the German state and the German approach is generally relatively decentralized with the with this federal approach and uh, maybe this also suits quite well to the SSI aspect so um, this could be something and also I mean we have tried <laughs> uh, for quite a long time to push other aspects towards uh, EIDs uh, digital identity that haven't worked the more, more centralized aspect so maybe it's now just the time to try something different and uh, to do it right. Uh, so I think it's something to look to look deeply into at some point. So not now, but we will will do it. So thanks again, and and thanks also for these comments. Uh, thanks, thank you very much, Michael. And our next thank you. is Kodana, Kodana Halavanya, and uh, so Kodana, we're very um, looking forward to to hearing your um, uh, your work. I think it's in the Ledger project at the moment, sort of also that that you're sort of doing things. But sort of please, uh, yes, it's, it's all yours. Oh, you're muted. I guess you have to unmute. I think uh, if you, if you if you can unmute. I think. Um, so I think you unmuted. You have to. Uh, um, Manolis, can you unmute Godana from your side or? Um, I think you're still. We don't hear you. Let me. Manolis, can you unmute Kodana? I don't think she's muted. I think there's an issue with the mic. Oh, there might be an issue with the microphone. Oh, that's that's something. Yeah. Um, let me see if we can. I think. Um, let's let's wait one minute and see if we can get it to work. But I think we cannot do it from our side. No, it, we, it's. Uh, I think what we'll try to do is, yeah, yeah. Is, is it okay if we go to you if you if you talk, and then we try to get to Godana later? Yeah, absolutely. I'm fine Fantastic. with that. Fantastic. Fantastic.
Um, cool. So my name is Jaya Klarbrecki, and I um, do research and strategy, broadly speaking. Um, and I'm here um, kind of representing two different projects from the NGI space. Um, one is Cobox, which is a peer-to-peer -peer backup system that uses Hypercore protocol. Um, and that is, uh, we were funded by the Ledger program, um, myself and a group of other people from a collective called Magma Collective um, founded the project. And then the other um, project that I'm here that I'd like to speak about is uh, called NIM, NIMTech, which is a privacy infrastructure and it consists of a mixed net and anonymous credentials. Um, NIM uh, also uses, it's built on technology that's come from several European Commission funded projects and broadly in the NGI space that includes uh, Panoramics and Decode. Um, it was part of ESIF as well, but um, and you know I, I kind of value the input of all the previous speakers and so on but in uh, essentially nim has uh, left sif or was was kicked out of sif because of um some security concerns where uh, basically we believe at nim that there are some security issues with decentralized identifiers um specifically when it comes to the issue of unlinkability um so uh you know not to be provocative and i have huge respect for all the work that everyone is doing but i do think it's good to have these um, quite kind of important technical discussions on um, the security of uh, the, the underlying technologies of self-sovereign identity. So I just put a link to a paper by Harry Halpin from NIM that discusses the technical details um, and the reasons why um, we have our skepticism around um, decentralized identifiers. Um, so, you know, these are two very different projects, Cobox and NIM, but I would say that probably both share a bit of an approach when it comes to identities that we don't really think that universal ident digital identities in general is the way to go, um, especially for sensitive personal information. So just to give a kind of brief update on what we've been doing with Cobox. Um, so as I said, Cobox is a peer-to-peer -peer backup system. Um, we have been developing, developing the project um, heavily using kind of um, uh, uh, kind of a need finding uh, workshops, um, very much involving users in the, in the process. And most recently, we were going to extend the system to also include um, something, you know, what's called peer discovery. So the ability for peers in the Cobox network to find other organizations to back up their data and to do so via, you know, using a registry in the Cobox system. Um, but as we were discussing this with, you know, the organizations and groups that we saw as our first users, um, we realized that actually, like many organizations and groups are in fact already highly networked outside of the existing digital systems that they're using. Um, and so therefore just, you know, in, in implementing and including a kind of registry of organizations as a means for them to find each other via Cobox was actually not only unnecessary, it also just created extra security risks. So, you know, I mentioned this partially as an update on what we're working on in Cobox, but also partially as a kind of I guess another little provocation to kind of open up a discussion about what are the kinds of things that we need to include in, in digital systems and what are the kinds of things that are actually most secure to just leave out entirely. Um, and uh, then to move on to NIM, um, as we mentioned, you know, NIM is, is, is highly critical of universal identities. Um, NIM is composed of kind of two elements. So the main thing is, is a mixed net um, that provides pr privacy at a kind of network level. Um, and the other uh, aspect to it is um, selective disclosure credentials. And here we're using something called Coconut, which was developed by previous EC um, funded projects. Um, it's an excellent uh, uh, kind of, it's an excellent kind of uh, protocol that allows a person to anonymously prove the rights to access various services. Um, and the key is, the key thing really here is that um, this is using unlinkable attributes. Yeah. So, at no point are the attributes able to kind of form a kind of overall picture of this person. They can continue to anonymously prove certain certain uh, necessary rights to ask, access um, given digital services. And I think like, you know, just to kind of extend a little bit more the kind of broader philosophical approach there is, is again that, you know, what we want to emphasize is, um, you know, for, for people, for individuals, as opposed to governments and, and companies, um, you know, digital identities are not as meaningful as simply just rights, the right to access the things that we need to access, you know, and to be, to have a kind of secure interactions online. 
Um, and so we, you know, with the kind of uh, the the selective disclosure credentials, anonymous credentials that we that we're kind of extending using Coconut, you know, the emphasis is really on trying to kind of enable rights for people online rather than um, coherent identities, which we believe is is the wrong way forward. Um, and this touches also a little bit on some of the things that Rob was mentioning earlier about um, the kind of burden of risk, you know. And for me, like there is again to kind of expand on some slightly more kind of philosophical perspectives you know self-sovereign identity you know the kind of overall aims are, are fantastic give the user more control over their online identities i mean there you know what's not to like about that but um uh oftentimes and you know in my role as a researcher you know oftentimes i've seen I've done a lot of research in in kind of let's say the the human aspect of um, both peer to peer technologies, but also blockchain and distributed te ledger technologies specifically. Um, and what I've seen is this idea of giving people more control, oftentimes and almost always, is actually giving people more risk because um, they end up interacting with systems that are very complex, and there's just no way that any single person has the adequate technical knowledge to be able to maneuver. Um, decisions in in uh, uh, in easy ways, and so what's important, apart from you know the kind of great work that I can see several projects here are doing around making it easier for people to to decide who they're sharing their their information with, and to extend, um, let's say, uh, you know, the consent, um, uh, meaningful consent in this space. I I completely value that. I think that's super important. But far more important is also to make sure that the infrastructure level is secure. Um, and to really have that uh, have that sorted. Um, and here, you know, I want to also kind of bring in, uh, you know, I was I was discussing um, some of this stuff with the chief scientist of NIMTech, Claudia Diaz, who's a fantastic um, security engineer. Um, and her way of describing it was like, you don't want to walk into a supermarket and pick up some food and have like, you know, a variety of different types of bananas, but you don't know which bananas are poisonous or not. Mm -hmm. But it's up to your choice. It's your choice, right? It's up to you. You can choose freely, freely which bananas you want to take. But like you simply might not have the adequate knowledge to know which specific bananas are poisonous or not, what type of chemicals, are, you know, should or should not be used, you know, um, in food production and so on and so forth. And so, you know, really just sorting out, uh, you know, especially privacy, especially privacy, you know, when it comes to uh, personal information is and, and sensitive information is uh, absolutely fundamental. And then for us, you know, the emphasis is on rights rather than an identity. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think um, I think it's extremely important what you're saying and it's very key because we're, we're, we're in an emergent situation. We've got to be very frank. We've got to be very open, and we've got to be very, um, very hard and tough also. Because if we don't do it now, we cannot remedy it later. So we've got to have these discussions very frankly and very openly. We these are this is the moment to have these discussions, and we, these are the places to have these discussions. And and um, and we should uh, definitely f sort of uh, arrive at moments where we disagree ve vehemently, sort of like uh, it makes no sense to all to agree about all these things. It's, it's, it's impossible. It's also not true. It, it cannot be a real world situation, sort of especially when we look at science, see what's going on in the world at, at, this, at this very moment in time. So, um, so we have to address these real world situations and we have to address this burden of risk and this privacy. And this is also why in the last years in, in the workshops, we've been working on this notion of disposable identities or tiny identities or ephemeral identities. And, and this is now also um, sort of gaining, getting, getting traction sort of, and this is about sort of negotiating the limits of this unlinkability. And, and, and of course, um, this will mean having severe discussions with public actors, with private actors, and citizens, uh, citizens, and and sort of self-sovereign technology empowered citizens being on the same par with these actors. Uh, I think that's to me is always 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 been um, kind of a situation that we have potential win-win-win for all these actors. So there's we see this tremendous as an end of a entrepreneurial govern, government paradigm where all these institutions are basically dying. And they will disappear into verifiable claims and credentials. So the governance, as we know now, will sort of be 90% verifiable claims and credentials. Business is beginning to see that this data aggregation paradigm is no longer actually gaining the business. 
So if I'm in a position to share certain attributes with certain service providers, I would actually be inclined maybe to share more if I also get some feedback on all of these things. So this accountability is a win-win-win for all these actors. But um, we need to we need to to take all the roles and all the actors and very serious and very seriously. And so we have should have these discussions now inside. I would say I would argue inside the projects and not uh, not 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 sort of create an outside already in a situation where we're just beginning to 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 address these questions. So thanks a lot for 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 raising these issues because these are key issues now. If we don't address them, who will address them? I mean, we are we are the the, the I'm not going to say we are the experts here because that's that would, that would seem a little bit that that's that sounds a little bit not sort of the way we want to. But but we, if we're honest, there's a lot of experts here, and if we cannot have these discussions among us, then where are we going to have them? Sort of. So so thanks again. Thank you. So Godana, I mean, I hope. Have you managed to? Uh, is it? Are you okay? It's still not really okay, I think. Um, but uh, Manolis, Manolis, um, Manolis, you send another email, I guess, uh, Godana. You send another email, huh? Let me. Um, let's um, wait. Very good. Yes. So, Godana, on the the, the uh, on at two o'clock, go to the big the big blue button link. Uh, sort of, at the, and I hope I hope um, a lot of people here could could, could join this uh, this session on big blue button. Just click the link, add your name, and then you're in it. And we talk at two. So, Godana, you will talk at two. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, apologies for making this kind of difficult then. Uh, Loretta, um, are you still here? Um, I'm here, but I can't. Uh, the, the mic. Well, okay, it works. There you are. There you are. It seems it seems Murphy is is on to us because uh, my slides disappeared, were changed. <laughs> no, I think it's really important yeah. that everybody has a say. Uh, some of you are very knowledgeable in this field, and I'm very happy in research that you find out the obstacles and you create the awareness of of something that is as important to us as the autonomy, liberty, security online. So um, I had my espresso. I hope you have a little lunch. And I, I hope to see you at 2. And I'm very happy we even have people from India. So um, I hope you get a chance to talk and be heard uh, in the next hour. And very, I'm, I'm really sorry. I felt really upset when my slides disappeared. So um, bear with us. Apologies for the system. And I uh, hope to see you from two to four, two to three. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, Loretta. And uh, thanks very much. All was absolutely great to have you all here and hope to see you at, uh, on the Blue Button at two o'clock. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Jaya. Thank you.